Okay, so the format of this meeting is a 10-minute speaker, and a 10-minute coffee break, and then a main speaker. Tonight, our first speaker is Joe. Help me welcome Joe. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm Joey. I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. Joseph. Sorry. There you go. Already messing up. No, uh, I guess I was given this about an hour ago. Uh, somebody asked me to speak, and what I've learned since being here is uh, you don't say no, uh, especially when it comes to the program uh, to help another addict or alcoholic. So it's a uh, it's a privilege, it's an honor. So thank you. Um, I guess I'll start off as my experience. I guess qualify myself. Um, started at a young age. I was always athletic. Never really knew really what to do uh, except just play sports, fit in. Uh, started smoking weed at the age of 11. Uh, you know, did that. You know, all the way up until I guess I was in eighth grade, and that's when things started taking off for me. Um, I was a functioning drug addict and alcoholic uh, for the better part of my whole life. Um, you know, went through high school, got scholarships, um, played baseball, wrestled. Uh, got tired of people telling me what I needed to do. Uh, and that kind of happened with uh, my dad. Tried to live uh, through me. And then so when a baseball coach uh, in college told me that I needed to do some shit, I said, fuck this, you know, I don't need to do this, I don't, I'm done. Thought that selling drugs would be a better out and uh, learned that, uh, you know, my parents weren't going to pay my way through college, so I sold dope and went to college. And, you know, I'd like to say it was, uh, it, it was just a shit show, but I, mean, I had a lot of fun. I did. Not all my using and uh, uh, drinking was bad times, you know. At that time, I could put anything down if I wanted to. Uh, really didn't get high on my own supply, I guess you'd say. Um, dropped out of college uh, with eight hours to graduate, and I uh, still haven't graduated. But... Uh, Got in some legal troubles, left, went on the run, said, well, shit, moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, learned that alcohol was uh, like my best friend. Like I could be whatever I wanted to. Downtown Nashville, didn't know anybody, and drink all night, <clears throat> get up in the next morning, go to work. And uh, do it all again. You know, I worked Monday through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those were my days. You know, and I stayed downtown at the uh, Embassy Suites. Uh, made great money. And uh, really had no desire of, of to get married or have kids or anything else. I was just... Uh, have fun, party when it last, you know. And uh, got home uh, one night, <clears throat> went back home to visit my parents, and ended up meeting this girl. And I left all the money, left everything, and moved back to Birmingham, Alabama. And fell in love with her immediately, and uh, argued for two hours about fucking religion. Uh, for some reason, that turned me on, whatever. But... <laughs> Um, she had a daughter who was six months old uh, who I just fell in love with uh, she still is the uh, one reason why I'm still here today uh, she's the apple of my eye she saved me uh, made me grow up uh, my ex-wife was a no nonsense uh, she's She's a normie, I guess is what everybody says. Um, and yeah, she uh, changed my life around for a while. You know, and then I went home, stayed there, moved back to Birmingham, uh, took a, a piss-poor job, 
uh, just to be back home. And then it was, uh, you know, ended up having another daughter and realized that that was probably the best thing in my life. That was the first, that's actually the happiest, uh, happiest time that I've ever had in my whole entire life was when my daughter Ashlyn was born. Uh, I still remember the joy. Um, she's a daddy's girl. You know, she's got me wrapped around her little pinky and she knows it. And uh, I was done having kids after that. I just wanted two girls. They'll always be daddy's little girls. And uh, right after Ashlyn was born, which was uh, June 11th of 2007, uh, on October of that year, I wrecked a four-wheeler and didn't have a helmet on in my front yard <clears throat> and ended up with uh, a brain injury and tore my shoulders up and my back. And for the next two years, I was prescribed uh, pain pills and uh, benzos and uh, took those regularly and abused them. I uh, was driving a truck at the time and that was the first time I realized that I was powerless over my alcohol or drug addiction. It was uh, after two years of doing that everybody was kind of like oh you need to you might want to look into getting some help and I was I was like, no, I don't have a problem. I got a prescription, you know. So that was, <clears throat> so that was the first time I went to uh, treatment. I humbled myself and asked my boss uh, for help, and he said, uh, okay, send me to uh, a treatment facility. I did 32 days inpatient, and then 30 days uh, IOP after that uh, before I could go back to work. Uh, They told me to go to 90 meetings in 90 days, so I really didn't want to do it, but before I left, looked up and uh, eventually became my home group. Uh, was not even a mile from my house, so I really didn't have an excuse or I couldn't bullshit my way out of going. But I went, and the first meeting I went to, it was another anonymous program, and uh, it was like being at home, you know walked in a bunch of old timers and uh they all just loved on me. Uh, could see that I was broken and I was gun ho for it, you know. I was like, okay, this is cool. I took my kids to every single meeting. Uh you know, I think it's a beautiful thing when kids are able to be raised up in the program like this. Uh because they it's real, you know. Uh uh you see people die, you see people get free from their addiction or alcoholism and uh, walk away and continue to walk and build a fellowship. And I was all good for good with that, you know. Uh, for about 32 months, I, I worked steps one, two, and three. Uh, came to four, <clears throat> I wasn't willing to do it. I just wasn't. I was scared. Uh, the fear of... Uh, doing a, a fearless and moral inventory scared the shit out of me. And so I got in another car wreck and uh, relapsed. And all this, every time that uh, I used, I was drinking. So I always, I guess I'll just kind of verify that, that uh, I'm an alcoholic. And... Uh, Alcoholism runs deep in my family. Uh, I was I was screwed before I even knew it, or thinking about it, uh, because none of my parents knew anything about the rooms. But uh, you know, so kind of fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> I have a son. He's it'll be ten in February. Uh, when he was born. Uh, it was the first time that I went to treatment. He was six months old, and that's when I kind of worked the program. I just stayed clean because that's, I, I was so scared of detoxing again that I didn't want to use. And when I saw the freebie from the 
the car wreck as I, I took it and uh, jumped all over it. After that, <clears throat> I immediately went in and said, like, it wasn't two days after uh, taking all the pills and filling them up with sugar uh, so, my, so my wife wouldn't know. Uh, I was like, look, I relapsed. And ever since then, I'd say the 32 months that I had, I was just dry. I wasn't working a program, wasn't doing anything uh, except showing up to meetings, going out afterwards, and just kind of filling my day, you know, being around other. I thought that would keep me clean, you know. Meeting makers make it, you know. Well, not if you're not fucking doing anything. And um, I learned that the hard way. Uh, but I could never wrap my head around the whole... Um, Every time I picked up a chip, it was for fucking me. It was all about me, every single time. Uh, it wasn't ever, you know, and I didn't get that until I got out here. And, uh, you know, after my 24-hour chip, all the rest are for the newcomers, you know, and that's something uh, I realized today, you know. This shit's been freely given to me, and I'm going to freely give it away. Uh, and that's just helping somebody else. You know, it's not all about Joey. And uh, so, <clears throat> fast forward a little bit. I uh, got introduced to uh, to heroin. And I kind of just ran my life. Uh, I had great jobs, making great money. Uh, and I was managing my addiction. Uh Stealing from companies. Uh, every single job I had, I had no reason to steal from. I had the money. It was just I didn't want uh, my ex-wife to see where the money was going out of our banking account. So I would steal from the company, and I would, you know, I was a regional vice president of uh, operations for two different companies, and so I figured out the best way to. Uh, supply my addiction and um, luckily I went to another treatment facility and <clears throat> they asked me they said they wouldn't press charges if uh, I just uh, said okay I'll resign so I resigned and uh, thought I had it all and uh, got out was doing exactly what I was told to do uh, and ended up losing my house sober. Uh, ended up losing everything. Uh, kind of fast forward a little bit further, my addiction just picked up a little, a little heavier. Uh, I lost my wife, lost my kids, uh, or I gave it away. And then, I guess the biggest thing is, is that uh, on Thanksgiving of last year, my ex-wife came in and said she wanted a divorce, and I knew that she was serious. I couldn't see past, uh, I couldn't see being a dad that didn't, wasn't there for his kids. And I was just like, I'm going to be an every other weekend dad, even though I wasn't there anyway. Uh, so I went outside with my kids getting in the car. It was raining. I got on my knees. I grabbed a 45 and put it in my mouth and pulled the trigger, and it jammed. And uh, after that, I knew my life. I didn't want to live anymore. I had no desire to live. Didn't want to be here. Uh, I was hell-bent on dying. I just wasn't going to pull a trigger again. So uh, I wanted to live out a dream that I had of uh, riding my motorcycle and being in a 1% biker club. So that's what I did. And uh, got introduced to... Uh, some uppers and uh, would stay up doing uh, just all types of crazy shit and uh, you know my life kind of that, that dream that I had became a fucking nightmare uh, even to the point when I got out here uh, I couldn't for two weeks I couldn't uh, listen to a Harley drive by and, uh, you know, so that kind of leads me to where I'm at now. It's 
Luckily, somebody paid my way out here to, uh, because they, I guess, still believed that I could get sober. And I got here on March, 5th, or March 11th. I didn't get sober until March 15th. And I uh, still didn't want to work steps one, two, and three. You know, I was fine, okay. Uh, but then I was just kind of pushed into doing, said, okay, well, then, if you don't do your step work, you're going to end up fucking leaving. And I already watched a couple of guys already leave. And uh, all that fear of working steps four and five uh, came, to, uh, came to an end about two weeks ago. You know, I uh, sat down with my sponsor, uh, went through four and five. And since then, my eyes have been open. I've been free. I have the freedom that I've longed for. Uh, I get to live with a bunch of great guys um, that help me every single day, see my character defects, show me where I can help others, um, be of service, and uh, do the do the deal, you know. And uh, for that, you know, I can't thank them enough. They say, you know, they believed in me when I couldn't believe in myself. And now that I believe in myself, I'll do it for somebody else. Thank you all.